Hey, it's Wes Stearns, Mo Wilson Properties. Today I'm with a good friend and owner of Bridge Title. We want to talk to you about fraud. Fraud is a, is a big, big problem right now in the real estate business. And I'm, I've asked Patrick O'Neill to give you a few examples of what he has seen uh, in the title business. So fraud is nothing new to real estate. The, the latest thing with fraud, Wes, is, is obviously the digital fraud that we're seeing. So we're seeing a lot of wire fraud uh, via email, uh, wire fraud via payoffs. Um, everything that's stemming from a lot of the real estate fraud, uh, title related at least, uh, has been via wire related. Um, and generally speaking, what will happen is a hacker will find a way to spoof either an agent's email, um, a title company's email, or a client's email. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the client has been hacked, in fact. Um, in some way, shape, or form, and I'm, again, I'm not an IT guy, um, but they are able to see certain aspects of a transaction. For example, they're able to know the buyer's and seller's names. They're able to know the property address. So they can have certain information that makes it seem like the email account that they're creating is legitimate. So they're able to create an email, for example, like yours is wes at callwest.com. So they're able to create one that's maybe wes at callwest.com, but the wes is a dollar sign. Uh, in the email address. So if you're not looking directly at a domain, it becomes difficult to spot whether it's legitimate or not. And in that, they'll they'll usually, sometimes it's really good English, sometimes it's not really good English as far as the language utilized in the actual email. So after they've created a spoofed email and it looks legitimate, the English in those, the body of that can be good or bad. Sometimes it's easy to spot, sometimes it's really clean and it's not easy to spot. What do my clients need to do, and people out there that are buying and selling, need to do uh, to double check when they get instructions on a payoff or from a title company? Always check the domain in which it comes from. So don't just rely on what is computer generated as the name on the account. So actually click to make sure that that is in fact the email address associated with the person sending the email. That's first and foremost. If anything is ever suspicious, do not send wire instructions via email. Title companies should never send you unencrypted emails with any sensitive information. So you should never get an email from a title company containing a social, uh, any bank account information that isn't encrypted first and foremost. We will not accept at Bridge email wire instructions. It will not happen. So you have to have physical hard copy of wire instructions. I, I just heard of a story last week where a buyer was buying a big house and wired $1.5 million in cash. The money was sent, but the, the email had been spoofed. Uh, what does someone do when they get fraud like that? So first and foremost, the FBI gets involved. So uh, a case is open with the FBI and it's investigated that way. It's very important, as soon as something like that occurs, the quicker the better, because what you can do is you can get the fraud divisions uh, involved with, with the banks. So banks have a fraud division, an anti-fraud division, and what they'll generally do is sometimes they're able to work with the receiving, the recipient's bank account. So they can work with that bank and put a freeze on that money occasionally. So sometimes it's, it's, it's the case where they can recover some of that money. Sometimes the bank account's already been drained and closed. So it's important imperative, as soon as something like that is to happen, you notify the FBI, you notify your bank, you get the fraud investigators involved, and you try to freeze the money. I've heard of sellers that have left the settlement table only to have a random person call the title company and say, hey, I gave you the wrong account number, please wire the money to that account. I know Bridge Title doesn't do it, but some title companies have been burnt for two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. Are there any other sam uh, examples of fraud that you've heard beyond the wire fraud that uh, my client should be aware of? So the biggest one, uh, in addition to clients' money being involved, would be banks' money being involved. And I mean that from a payoff lender st uh, standpoint. So our payoffs you generally come via fax. So fax is a, a relative secure way to receive information uh, directly from a bank uh, with that payoff information. So on the payoff information or the payoff statement, there'll be wiring instructions uh, included in the body of the statement generally. Uh, well, what has occurred just like the spoofing of emails is they're spoofing payoff statements. So they're not coming via fax, but generally they'll come from a different uh, a different email address associated with the transaction. Again, it can be a spoofed email from the agent, it can be from the client, hey, here's an updated payoff statement is generally what it'll say, and the payoff statement will be nearly identical with the exception of the wire instructions being changed. And we've seen that at Bridge happen a couple of times to us. Um, 
luckily we caught it and, and there was no issue. So what we've done uh, as a title company is our, our process now and, and our protocol for that is we do not wire out payoff statements. Mm -hmm. um, just to avoid any of the potential fraud associated with that because the last thing you want is now it's not just the client's money but it's their mortgage payoff so you have a, a slew of, of, of issues that snowball there so we've we've killed uh, wires going out there's a few lenders that will not accept um, checks anymore and require a payoff statement uh, and so we're familiar with those lenders and we have master wire instructions on file so we know that those accounts won't change the bottom line is there's a ton of fraud in every corner in the real estate business. So we're going to have more videos and we're going to discuss title insurance, which does not cover fraud, correct? Well, it covers fraud. It just doesn't cover the wire fraud associated with that transaction. So, so it wouldn't be claim, a claim on your title insurance policy for the house that you're about to close on. We're going to have more videos coming about title insurance, a mock closing, and certainly welcome your comments. Uh, please subscribe for more information. Patrick, thank you for your time. Anytime.